Sony Interactive Entertainment is a multinational video games company owned by Sony. Founded in 1993, then split into SIE Inc. and SIE LLC in 2010 and 2016, respectively, Sony amassed 76 billion US dollars in 2019 and are a Fortune 500 company, ranking 122nd on the global index. Based on this, it's hard to argue that Sony isn't a powerhouse of the gaming industry. However, as time has gone on, Sony has had to adapt to changes within the industry in order to keep up. One of these changes involves SIE investing in longer and more stylized games, more akin to interactive films. Today, I'm going to use three examples published by Sony to discuss what this change in style means and what it could mean for the future of games and film. Depending on how you define cinematics, Erica is either the least or the most cinematic example. It's an interactive full motion video thriller game where you control the decisions of the traumatized young protagonist Erica as she uncovers more and more of her father's history with the mysterious Delphi house. Full motion video means that unlike a lot of modern video games, nothing was computer generated and everything in Erica was filmed on set by a production team. Erica is one of only 43 FMV games to be published by SIE and Stuart Heritage described it in The Guardian as a brave bold experiment in storytelling. On July 17th, 2020, The Last of Us Part 2 became Sony's second biggest US launch ever. Five days later, it recorded the biggest digital launch month sales of any PlayStation exclusive, selling 2.8 million units, and then in August 2020, The Last of Us Part 2 became the third highest grossing video game ever on PlayStation in the United States. A significant example of how this game can be considered cinematic and a driving factor behind the cinematization of modern video games is a quick search on YouTube of the term The Last of Us Part 2 movie, where you'll find 8 to 10, even 12 hour long videos compiling just of in-game cutscenes which they have labeled with the term movie. God of War has also had its fair share of success, winning the Game of the Year award at the 2018 Game Awards and was reported as having sold an estimated 20 million copies in November of 2020. The most notable fact about God of War is that it won five BAFTA awards in 2019. And just like The Last of Us 2, God of War has also had multiple videos posted online of players compiling its in-game cutscenes into multi-hour long movies. There's an argument to be made that all these examples constitute as games, but at the same time as movies or films with added interaction. Evidence of this includes Erica's use of real-life film production techniques, or at a deeper level, with Last of Us Part II and God of War's notoriety as story-heavy pieces of media. They all possess enough similarities to modern film production values that audiences begin to question which influenced the other. Henry Jenkins, in his 2006 book The Wow Climax, tracing the emotional impact of popular culture, stated that games have increasingly influenced contemporary media. But what truly is the difference between a game and a film? At first, the answer to this question may seem simple. If you take a moment to consider how games have evolved over time, with more and more story cutscenes being added, more stories fleshed out, more focus on cinematics, suddenly the answer becomes less clear. Cinematic games are dominating the mainstream currently, with games like God of War and The Last of Us Part II winning more and more awards and receiving huge recognition within the mainstream. It's arguable that one of the causes of this success is due to the manipulation of typical transmedia storytelling. In Henry Jenkins' book, Convergence Culture, where old and new media collide, he describes a transmedia story as one that unfolds across multiple media platforms. He also talks about the ideal form of transmedia storytelling in which each medium does what it does best. A film introduces you to the story, gives you a brief working knowledge of the universe, and a game allows for the exploration of its finer details and expansive lore. What Sony accomplishes with these games is an atypical approach to transmedia storytelling, in which each medium is combined and is delivered singularly, but are also notably distinct. Cutscenes are the best example of this, as in most games they are produced as short films to break up the action and give the audience a rest, but they can be considered transitions from one medium to another. After a cutscene finishes, the audience is then thrown back into direct participation as they continue the game. Cutscenes allow audiences to stop participating directly with the game and start participating passively by watching it like a film. They are no longer in control of the narrative, and therefore they are powerless to influence it. This shift in audience interaction indicates how cinematic games are becoming transmedia storytelling devices, as two mediums can be differentiated easily but have combined so seamlessly. Sony has merged two forms of media, film and game, but at the same time kept them distinct, allowing for this atypical delivery of transmedia storytelling that delivers huge success. So given all this information, what does this mean for the future of film and game? It's possible we could see more of a convergence between the two mediums in the future, with this already notably occurring in the mainstream with the release of Bandersnatch, the interactive Black Mirror episode released on Netflix in 2018. Whether this will transition to big screen cinema or remain on the small screen isn't something that we can predict right now, but what we can say is that it's not an impossibility.